Hi, this is Andrew with Chapter 2 of the Star Traders Let's Play 4X Empires series. In Chapter 1, we started a new empire, got three planets stood up, and a basic economy running. In Chapter 2, we are going to look at expanding that empire and increasing the power of our economy and preparing ourselves for a full galactic empire. So, one of the major deciding points to help us switch over into chapter two is that we have now completed starship construction one which you can see here in the tech tree uh, right here so it's one of the first technologies available to you uh, and then when you look at it you can see that we have a transport and colonized world come out of that tech tree so as soon as you have starship construction one completed you now are able to go to one of your planets and create a new ship and pick a colony ship for 143 credits and 19 CP. This will create a ship that will be able to go to a nearby world and start a new colony. Now, the colonies you start on these systems will not be as strong as the colonies that you have on your three core system. The technologies to build the colony hives that came across the Exodus uh, are out of our reach right now. So keep that in mind as you expand. The colonies will be significantly weaker until you increase your technology and are able to rebuild ships of the same class and quality. Now, the second part uh, of why this is the next chapter and you want to expand your empire is about how we're going to start thinking about our colony economies. So if you look at the three worlds that I currently have colonized, Kadar Prime, Devaltos Prime, and our sharp prime, you can see that they're all at about four population. <clears throat> and in all of the cases, except for a sharp prime, no, sorry, in both cases, Kadar is a little ahead, um, but Devaltos prime and a sharp prime are both building a second factory. Now, what this is going to get us to is that we have currently have two CP points being generated by a factory. And uh, we have four population on both of these planets. So quite soon we're going to reach a point where we have four CP available on all of our planets, which in the way that I play in my strategy is about the point that we stop worrying about CP on a planet and move on to focus on more important parts of our economy. I'll be working through that in this chapter. We'll come back to that concept a number of times. I want to say while I play this uh, chapter, I'm going to purposely play a little bit behind the curve. Um, I'm going to allow things to happen to me instead of trying to get ahead of them. Uh, so I'll mention that when it happens, but it's a good way to illustrate the needs of the, of the game and your people. So the first thing we want to do is go and add some new colony ships to our queues. I uh, only have enough money right now, as I mentioned in the first chapter, I'm kind of like to play close to the wire at the beginning. Uh, I'm going to make sure we get this plan on the star chart. And I like to play close to the wire, but this is the phase in which it starts to pay off to not um, be so close to zero in your credits. I'm going to start trying to amass a treasury here so that I can afford subsidizing my new plants as we go. Okay, so I uh, forgot to start a new technology. In my strategy, I like to move. I like to drive economies by mines and trade points. So I'm going to go right into Planetary Construction 2, which will give me a spice den. It's going to be very important as soon as I populate planets and colonies that have over five population. So I'm going to start researching that. And we're just going to move this ship. I'm going to start moving through turns a little quickly. I'm just going to play, and I'll talk about the most salient points <coughs> This would take a really long time if I talked about every single action that I'm taking. Um, so I'm just going to keep skipping the advisor. Uh, Kadar Prime has now uh, ticked over to completing its first mine. You can see my, the income out of the planets going up. Um, and that's something I'm going to really focus on in the coming days. Now we have the first colony ship now under construction. And if we take a look at the Valtos, we're at 40%. It's going to be another seven turns before we wrap up that factory. And we're almost done with our factory on Richard. So let's just advance the turn counter here a little bit. 
Again, the scout has been out in long patrol, so he's headed back. Uh, Kadar Prime has reached housing capacity. Now, one of the reasons that I like 4CP as a number is that it makes it very easy uh, to build what we need. Going above 4CP it means you're chasing CP and you're building more things, but what you're building is factories and houses, and you're really not strengthening your economy so much as your ability to build like, more expensive things quickly. So you look, a uh, HAB unit is 10 CP, so Kadar Prime with its plus two CP bonus because it's Kadar, we can build that in two turns. Uh, if you subsidize that project on a core world like Richard or Devolta's Prime, it could be finished in two turns as well. So I'm not too worried about the fact that I can very rapidly get these projects that I want into the queue and get them completed. So that's one of the reasons I love 4CP and it frees me up to focus on uh, other things that are going on of uh, higher import. Now, one of those things, you can see in the turn events, I'm now being prompted to uh, start worrying about treaties. Politics in the Star Traders Forest is really important. Uh, it's a great way to empower your empire if you're using the treaties for your own benefit and to prevent uh, very negative conflicts from happening within your empire. So right now I have pretty limited treaty selection. I'm just going to start a trade meeting. Uh, this could cause trade routes to happen, which will increase the profitability of my empire. It's 25% to succeed, but if it goes off well, it's very worth the wait and the very low cost. Uh, so we're going to move along in turns here. So as you can see, uh, it's in many uh, forex games. There's a lot to manage and a lot to look at. A lot of these turns you want to kind of take slower. I'm playing at a fast pace here to try to move along, um, but Good thing to think about, kind of take your time, especially if you don't, you're new to the new to the game. Uh, so we now have four CP on Richard Prime, so I'm just going to build a new colony ship, uh, which will take five turns. Again, four CP is a really nice optimal number. Everybody's happy. It won't take very long to complete the work um, that we need, and we're off. So. As we continue to move toward the next turns, I uh, brought this scout back. I'm just going to let him uh, recharge up and fuel. Now, I am getting a point where I my plan for expansion, and one of the things I like to do is to keep the colony, the faction colony counts uh, at least close. So I'm going to have every one of my prime worlds build a new colony ship, and we're going to go colonize. I'm currently looking at these three planets, the two red giants and this white dwarf. So. Uh, I may start thinking about um, sending the explorer back out there. I got this section of space pretty well explored. I'd like to know more about what's over here and what's in the far corner. Uh, so those are areas that I'll think about exploring in the coming turns. Now the first one to get a colony ship there, Kadar, is going to get the pick of the planet. So having completed his colony ship, colony ship's going to move in a, into uh, position to <coughs> finish the turn colonizing, and we can now uh, start the work on the HAB unit, which, as mentioned, even with a pretty low CP count, is going to take a very small amount of time, which allows me to focus on other things. So uh, that's the end of the turn, and we're just going to lay down my fourth colony, which is a really big and exciting moment as we start to expand our empire. Okay, lots going on, as you can see. So we have a new colony come up on uh, Outer Reach. It's a great mineral and very good quality role. Uh, what to do with my new colony? I'll come back to that momentarily. Uh, morale drops in Kodar Prime. As mentioned, uh, we are building up the happy unit we're going to need to prevent that from being a problem. Population has grown again. The Kadarians are very happy here, so I'm going to actually drop another HAM unit in the queue. That's uh, perfect. We make a lot of money from that good planet. Uh, and we have managed to get a trade alliance going, which is really nice. You read about that in the library. That's the factions working together. You're not always going to get that kind of harmonious interaction between the factions, but when you can get it, take it. Uh, here on Kadar Prime, what I'm going to start, not Kadar Prime, sorry, Outer Reach, uh, I'm going to start working on a new mine. I'm going to focus on making these new colonies uh, production centers for my colony. Not production in terms of CP, but in terms of profit. So we're putting in a mine, and if 
Uh, something changes the population, I can always subsidize a HAB unit and drop it into the queue uh, and worry about it then. So I'm just going to start the mine building process. We get that colony profitable as soon as we can. And we roll over the turn here and we got morale going up. We got insufficient housing. Uh, now here's one that's a little different. We got our, our HAB unit went in, so that's good news. And now we're getting issues of lack of spice. And this is where I was talking about playing behind the curve. Um, when you get a, a planet that hits about five population, you need to start thinking about a spice trade uh, to bring that valuable resource into this planet. The star report for a prime world gives you a five level of spice. But as your population goes above that, you need to investigate um, raising that. Now at this point, I'm still waiting on uh, my current research um, for planetary construction 2 to roll over and allow me to deal with that. So population growing a little bit faster than I would like there, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. Here we have Kadar Rashart finishes the colonizer. They're ahead. So they're going to take the better world. You want to colonize the red giants when you can. And as mentioned, they now have a really nice number of CP. And what we're going to turn our attention to here is mining. So really high mineral uh, quality on this world. And we're going to start putting in mines. Take about four turns to get one of those in. And you'll see this small uh, economy of 28 a turn really rise as we start to install a set of mines into that world. So the, just ending the turn, we got waypoints, so our ships are headed where they need to go. The Volthos Prime has finished its factory, caught up now, and will make the third colony ship. I really like to, I don't know why, but I enjoy standing in threes, so this is kind of perfect. The colony ship will be a few days behind. We've got a nice new HAB unit on Qatar Prime, and we're going to do the same thing here, putting in focus on mines. We have more than enough CP, and we want to expand our constant economy bonus. So mines are amazing because the more of them go in, the more you get every turn. And the only thing that can really stump that is uh, conflicts. So we're going to hammer that. We have some great mineral worlds at our core, and we're going to make the most use of them. Colony ship keeps moving on its uh, pre-assigned waypoint. And probably by now the explorer is back to full gas. So we're going to send him out perfect. There's an anomaly. Couldn't be better. Uh, and we'll just end the turn. This is those quiet moments in your empire that you can click through a number of turns quickly. Very excited to see planetary construction uh, complete, which means I can get a spice off. So I'm going to head to Kadarva Prime to do that next. Personally, my favorite next tree to go down is the faction politics tree. It was a spice festival, which we can use to raise around a planet if there's a problem and the first level of the exchange uh, and dual assassins which helps reduce negative conflict exchanges are big the way i build an economy is based on mining and trading uh, so really looking forward to getting that so i'm dropping straight into faction politics one and we've got our first mine on outer reach which is perfect and you can see that we now have a nice profitable one from negative five to 28 profit uh, colony here and during that time the housing went up so to stay ahead of that I'm going to drop in a subsidized HAB unit. We'll be finished in a couple of turns and we'll come back to looking at mines uh, when that's done. Now in Kadar Prime we've had not enough spice trade. We've got more population coming in. So we're going to probably start looking at uh, I guess next turn we'll start looking at putting in more HAB units and putting in a spice down. We just need to save up a little more money. As I said, this is the sort of time where you want to start to rack up a bit more of a treasury in your in your, uh, in your your world so that you have the option to do subsidized drops like that. When you're in a rush to get something in, you can see now I can drop in my spice down, but it's going to prevent me from doing anything else for the turn. So let me just make sure that I'm happy. I'm not going to that I want another mine on Rashart Prime. Uh, you can see again the economy is growing fast here, but I think the priority right now is to get a spice den deployed in Kadar Prime, uh, and we'll follow that with a HAB unit. 
and we can end our turn by let's do both exploring and we'll finish with colonization of this red dragon we get another uh, good look here it's awesome there has been evidence again the the great exodus has passed us by where a splinter segment has been left behind or lost and the main evidence of the templar fleet has uh moved on with the main exodus we have very little evidence that we will get reinforcements or help uh, so evidence that the templars have come this way before us is very beneficial got a nice new uh fletcher cross colony don't have the money at the moment to make a mine, so I'm going to try to be uh, patient. I'm going to drop a half unit into my uh, Kadar Prime. And since we're waiting around, I guess I'm going to put a half unit on Fletcher Cross. When I have the money, I'm going to put in a mine and put it ahead of that half unit. I'm not too worried about it. Um, but why not spend the CP that the planet has on something uh, beneficial at this point in its early life? So I scan that planet, and we're moving on. Now you can start to see that my economy is growing. Uh, we have a new, nice new uh, colony ship headed off to this white, um, white dwarf. And you can see my turn profit when I started was at about 110. So now I'm cranking up more colonies can if they've got mines on them can help uh, with that uh, quickly. And if you start to load mines on your core worlds, you're going to get that pro that profitability spike. Now Kadar Prime is suffering because its morale is lower, and this means it's paying higher maintenance for all of its upgrades. So when we get the spice up and the morale reclines on our prime will get a much better turnover so that's why this spice den is our number one uh, priority there right now and just check the turn events I think out of reach of the hat unit I would like to afford a mine so again worth being patient and stocking up some cash so that I can make the right decision and wait that one out we've got five colonies a very good start the advisor is correct about that Move the ships. Um, this explorer, we've got to keep going deeper, looking for more planets and things. And we're going to come back, and now I can afford to put in a, a second mine on uh, out of reach. I want to check my other core worlds to make sure we're not going to bump up over population. Um, they're all in good shape. None of them are uh, coming up over their spice trade yet and are going to suffer morale loss, which is perfect. Um, and I would really like to put in another mine here on Devaltus Prime. Just have to be patient. Um, mines are expensive, so you gotta you have to burn a couple of extra turns in between the efforts to make sure that you get them in. They cost more to install than other uh, starting uh, starting upgrades, but they're very very worth it. So we now have a mine going in and. Get to colonize this turn. Let's just make sure our scout is as useful as he can be. And we're going to send him up in this corner looking for anomalies. You never know what those game creators will tuck away in different places. And we'll complete our third colonization. So now you can see we have started the real process of expansion of an empire. Now here we are. We are going to, we've got a pretty bad roll with seven quality. 16 mineral um that hurts i think the first thing we're going to do is put in a mine uh, but i think there are other planets in line so you got to be careful not to let people jump ahead uh, here we have a half unit already going in for fletcher cross that's fine and let's make sure that we don't have any other core worlds that are waiting like we prime is in much better position to get a mine in so we're going to drop a mine in over sharp prime and just toggle through the different planets to make sure we're in good shape here. Really want to see Kadar Prime get back to 10 morale. And okay, so to use the CP that this planet, new planet, is turning over, I'm going to put in a half unit and we'll come back and drop it a mine when we have the money. It's exciting to hear. Research is complete. Uh, 
So now, again, in my strategy, I'm headed straight for this exchange. So I'm going to move on to uh, faction politics. Now, this is a great time that you might also be thinking about going um, up planetary construction, very valuable HAB unit 2 up here, not that far away. Uh, and off of HAB unit 2, you also can get access to um, space, space colonization, which is going to allow you to build more advanced uh, colony, uh, colony ships. And this is where you're headed to really be able to get back to a point of what a space, a colony hive was like when we began the game. Alternately, you could be really looking up the space tree, uh, the ship tree, planetary invasion is out here, cruisers, carriers, all sorts of valuable things, but I like to get my economy uh, started in a strong way before I come back um, come back to uh, trying to build out my military capabilities. So I'm going to give it a little bit longer. We want to properly get this empire rolling. Uh, we do have a suspended treaty, and I want to just give another shot to a trade meeting. And we're going to look and see what colonies are idle here. So Kadar Prime is back at being idle, and we really could use a mine going in there, which is just perfect. And we now have the, uh, the spice we need, so we're waiting. We should start to see that colony tick back up in morale in a very positive fashion. I'm going to play a couple more turns here. Um, it's exciting to see Kadar Prime again go to housing capacity and that mines are going in across the empire. So let's see. We have Outer Reach has a mine. We're making good money. It has great quality extra housing. I think we're going to probably want to put in another mine there. DeVolto's Prime is going to build that mine away faster. Um, but it's also nearing the spice line. So I'm going to take a detour with DeVolto's Prime and put in a spice den. Now that planet alone is making more than 100 a turn, this is where we really want to be, get some very profitable planets. And I'm going to make sure I reserve uh, some money in the budget for a HAB unit for Kadar Prime. So don't forget about it later, just get that in a queue. The Explorer will get back to working over here, being lazy. Um, and I think... Just want to make sure there aren't any other planets along this edge, and I'm going to clean out that zone and keep on going. Aha! Just what we wanted to see. So, morale is now ticking back up on Kadar Prime. We have a new mine coming and a HAB unit following it directly. Getting another HAB unit at Bouchard Prime. It's now making over 100 turn. And I'm just going to drop in another mine there. Again, you can see that the 4CP is not slowing me down. I haven't wasted all of my time chasing factories, even though I have more population than I have factory points built. Um, I've been putting my time and energy into building up a strong economy, and I'm just cranking out mines. And the morale is coming back up, and we are now making really nice money a turn. When the game, when I started Chapter 2, I was making just over 100 a turn. And now I'm making 300 a turn, and I'm going to be able to keep hammering on the mines here. I'd like to play just a little bit longer. I know this video has gone uh, pretty long. I'm going to put in a new mine at one of our new colonies. Again, great colony with very high quality and amazing mineral roles. So we want to exploit that as early and as quickly as we can. Now that we have these border planets, I'm going to send my Templar Defenders out. So I kind of backed into a corner and I know it, so I want to make best use of that. Um, keep my uh, defenders out where they may be of uh, highest value. Roll the turnover, and we got morale coming up on Kadar Prime. Very exciting moment. Um, just keeps ticking up, making more money by the day. And we got a new habit in Fletcher Cross, so we're staying ahead there. Uh, and you really have to think this is a tough planet. The 10 qual quality, these are the ones you have to plan the most carefully because uh, they're going to grow in population and people are want to overcrowd here and they're going to push for the, the for you to run them over quality, meaning you build more upgrades than there are quality points. Um, can be a valuable way to do it, especially in a world that is 17 mineral. Um, so for the moment, going to just stick to the plan here and put in another mine. And... We got morale increasing and everything seems to be working just great at the moment. Just ticking along. 
And I wish they had some more anomalies, but heck, what can you do? So now we're making 300 a turn, enough that every turn I can be ordering a new mine for a planet. And we are headed off here. Now I do want to be make sure that I occasionally look for um, population on these planets. So Richard Devaltos is now is right on the line, and I think oh, I already did start a spice tank. Ow, smart. Uh, getting ahead of that one. We'll also really increase my research points per turn. It's a very good thing for the planets that can afford it to be doing this. They're making good money, they have strong mining backbone, put in a spice tank, get an extra point of research. It's a really big benefit. Um, you don't want to lose the research war in a 4x game. Uh, you don't want to fall behind the alien technology curve. So now we're up at 113, a turn from a sharp prime, and now that I've talked it up so much, I am going to turn around and put in a spice in uh, and get that moving along. Now, on both Richard Prime and Kadar Prime, uh, I might, if I had been looking at it, I might have considered a, a spice festival here. These are very cheap upgrades. Uh, events, actually, so they're 100 credits for and 20 CP, and you can increase them around the planet quickly. So that could have helped me kind of cover this gap um, from 8 to 10 very quickly. But I'm off building other things, so right now I'm not too worried about it. It can be very helpful if you get a planet that gets damaged morale for one reason or another. It's a very cheap way to kind of get it back, and you will save a lot of money on your maintenance overall. You'll see it's happening naturally anyway. We've got the right amount of spice. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Had to take a, a coughing break. The right amount of spice um, and not overpopulated, so the morale is coming back on its own anyway. Um, this explorer needs to come home again. Nice long patrol. I've got the new ships out on the new border planets, and I'm starting to think about the next level of expansion. I'm making three times what I was making a couple of turns ago. I have a treasury that's starting to build up uh, and worlds, uh, not a lot of worlds to be spending it on. Uh, I will put in another mine here on Devalto, so I did find a place to spend my money. Uh, but you can see that I'm getting ahead of the curve now and moving a lot faster. It's got HAB units coming in, mines coming in all over the place, and Faction Politics 2 is in. This is a big moment. This is what I was kind of, sorry the video got long, but I wanted to play out to here because it's a kind of a seminal moment. Uh, what I'm going to spend some money on now is getting an exchange in every single world that I can. Exchanges generate trade points. Uh, trade points generate money all the time. Trade points are very affected by politics. So you saw the treaties I was running in the politics screen. They can be immensely boosted by politics, and they can be gutted by politics. Also, exchanges increase research. So this is a, they're kind of expensive to put in, but they really, really help the empire. And if you're running a good political game, uh, they're, they're great. I want to, as soon as I can, get one on every single world. So I'm going to drop one on Kadar Prime, and you'll see my economy will blow up as I start to really spread these around to all locations. We've got 3 and 3 housing on uh, Fletcher Cross. Uh, this is one of the worlds where, again, we have low quality. We have a mine in. The mine is not moving along very much, and the population is growing. We may want to start thinking about putting a factory next. Um, but what I can do to uh, work against that population growth is to grab a having a subsidize it and move it up in the priority queue. How to reach is put in its mine. If I had the money, I would put it in an exchange already. Uh, Faction Politics 2 is in, so now we need to look. I'm going to keep looking up this tree now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm headed to have unit 2, which is where I like to get. And from there, I either have to decide to start getting military or look into mine 2 and factory 2, which are a big upgrade point for the Empire. I have the money, so I'm going to go back and catch these idle worlds that I had waiting. Uh, it's talking about here, I want to put in a new exchange. And on the Rash Outpost, don't have the money to put in what I want right now, and the quality on this planet is so low that I think I should be happy uh, with the credits it's making and just let it sit 
for a turn or two. Maybe when a little minute or two and I have some more money, I'll put in another mine. So we've hit housing capacity, but we have an exchange going in. Uh, again, this sort of trick is where you really want to have the money to be able to do this. Anytime it comes up, subsidize a have unit, pop it to the top, and it'll be done pretty quickly. So even if they go over population, the morale damage will not be that bad. Now that I'm starting to work on trade, this is even more exciting to be spending my money on these possible treaties. That could result in a trade route, uh, which I could upgrade to a trade alliance if I had the right treaties, and that will really increase the amount of money that every trade point is making me. So this is a, a point where I really want to put the emphasis on cranking out exchanges and continuing to build up the mining infrastructure where I can. I've got the money. Oh, I spent the money. Nope, not doing anything there. Patience is the way of the Templar. So I think at this point, We've got spice ends, mines going in, and I'll uh, play till the exchange comes in. I'm going to put one on both of my other core worlds as fast as I can. Really exciting. Uh, Richard Prime gets one. Devaltos Prime is about to get theirs paid for. Now, exchanges are core upgrades, and you see a lot of different types of upgrades in uh, your upgrade list are core upgrades. The Starport is a core upgrade. Uh, your spice den is a core upgrade. It means you can only have one of them at a time. So what you're looking for is to get one of them on the planet and then go after, if you like them and you like their benefits, go after technologies that give you the next level. So for uh, luckily, Exchange 2 is actually very easy to reach considering where I'm at. Exchange 2 is here uh, under Faction Politics 3 and is a massive step forward. So. I will be coming back to get this sometime soon, but right now I'm headed up the planetary construction tree a little bit longer, and I don't have enough uh, Exchange 1s installed yet even to for it to make a difference. Like Exchange 2, I don't really need it until I have a solid base of Exchange 1s uh, landing on planets. And I think probably next turn, hopefully, Kadar Prime will have exchange installed this Exchange. So this is perfect. Uh, we have now really laid the foundation of a much more successful empire. We have gone from being a little fledgling three-planet trio to a six-planet uh, starter empire here. See that my, my profit has almost quadrupled, and I think if I could just work out these morale problems on these planets, which I might do with some spice festivals, that I would easily cross the finish line to 4x the profit in a short amount of time. Now you can see that I've done that by keeping my CP low, keeping my morale high and focusing on mining and now getting to a point in the technology tree where I can focus on trade. That's my personal style, the way I like to build a strong economy. There are other ways to do it. CP economy can be very valuable, but I like the mining and trade-backed economy. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video. I hope it's useful and look forward to looking at uh, chapter three.